In this video, we'll learn to create lithophanes by taking a simple photograph and turning it into a printable file that we send to a 3D printer, which will produce a thin plastic sheet which illuminates when lit from behind. A lithophane is a thin plaque of translucent material which has been molded to varying thicknesses, such that when lit from behind, the different thicknesses show as different shades, forming an image. Originally made out of plaster, they were invented in the 19th century and became popular in their use as night lights, lampshades, or window hangings. Today we're going to learn how to build our own lithophane file that will be sent to a 3D printer to be created. For today's example, I'm going to use this image of Bill Murray the dog. That's Bill Murray on the left. There are a few things we can do to make this image a bit cleaner, and that will give us a more successful lithophane. So I'm going to open it up in Photoshop, and the first thing I'm going to do is turn this background into an editable layer by double-clicking on it. The next thing I'm going to want to do is come over here to my Object Selection tool, and if we choose the first of the drop-downs, we'll see that it automatically starts highlighting things that it thinks are an object. So we'll click on Bill Murray the dog, and then what we want to do is kind of get rid of everything else around Bill Murray. And so in order to do this, come up to Select and hit Inverse and push Delete. This gets rid of all of the rest of the image, and I'm going to hit Com Command-D, a shortcut for Deselect. We're going to add another layer, and this one we're going to fill with just white. Go to Edit, Fill, White. We can move that layer down below, so now Bill Murray is on top. Now that we have Bill Murray on top of this white layer, we want to see if there's anything that needs to be cleaned up. And the only thing I can spot that's really out of line is this little tiny shark fin on his hair. So I'm going to move over here to my magnetic lasso tool and just kind of run it along his neck, making sure to select that shark tail and hit delete. There we go. That's about as good as I need it for today. The other thing we want to do is try and boost the contrast just a bit because the more contrast we can find here, the, the more detail will come out. One way to help visualize this is to come up to our image mode and turn it into grayscale. This allows us to see what we'll see more or less when we're looking at the lithophane with light behind it. So if you think that it's a little bit too uniform, you can come to brightness contrast and just lighten up the light areas and bring your contrast up a little bit. Great, now I'm ready to save my file and we'll move on to the next step. Next, we're gonna open up a website called It's Litho. It's Litho is just one of many options that will help you make your lithophane, and this one makes it particularly easy. So once we're on itslitho.com, we're just gonna click Get Started. Our first step is to move over here to the Upload panel and upload that image of Murray. Next, once I click on Murray Done, I'm gonna move over to my Model panel and we'll see that Murray is already popping up right where we want him. So if we zoom in a bit, the first thing we're gonna notice, sorry about that, is that the quality is quite bad. So don't be alarmed. This is not, the first thing we notice when we zoom into this image is that the image quality seems to have deteriorated considerably. This is not how it's gonna print. This is really just a, a model setting. So in order to keep the file size low, they automatically have your lithophane preview model set to low so that it's a smaller file that can be moved around. But if we move it up to high or even native resolution, suddenly we're working with an image that's much closer to what we had uploaded. When it prints, it's always gonna print at this native resolution. So for now, we can move it back down to low in order to work around it a bit easier. Some other qualities that you're going to see here are your shape qualities. And if I zoom out a little bit, the zoom is really finicky. You can see from this drop down that we have all these different options of things we might want to print. You can turn it into a plane, which is what we started at, a cylinder, which will morph our dog all the way around. I suppose you could put a light inside this you might want to go for something like an arc, which 
gives it a little bit of a bend so that you could put a light behind it. But for today, we're going to go with a simple circle. A few things that you notice about this circle is that this white area around here, don't be alarmed by it. The reason that I cut all that out in Photoshop is that it's actually going to illuminate the detail of Bill Murray's face considerably. So all of these settings here, I'm going to leave at their maximum, I mean, sorry, at their default, and just let them be. What I really want to work on tweaking is my frame. You have the option to do a border, a frame, or none. And because we're printing a circle, it's going to need some support. So if we put a thick border around it or frame, it's going to really offer a bit more support in the printing process when the printer is moving across printing each one of our slices. So I'm going to keep the frame. I'm going to turn the thickness down a little bit though, maybe to two something, and I'm going to turn the angle and depth down. I want more of my image than I want of the frame. As we already saw in our quality options, um, we're going to leave this millimeter per pixel 0.1 because that's what we're going to ultimately print at. In our attributes, we have the possibility to enable a little hook, which means someone could hang it, possibly on a window or from a tree. Our model options, again, don't really matter because they're really just about how we're seeing this model right now. So we can skip over those, but our image options are important. And in particular, I want to think about where Bill Murray sits here, and I want him to be a lot bigger. So I'm going to zoom him in. Not that much. I actually want to pretty much cut off all of the part to the right where Murray is sitting next to another dog. I think that's working pretty well. Once our settings are in place and we're happy with the image, we're going to download this STL file. Its litho will automatically make an STL file, which is what we're going to need for the next step. I'm going to say download lithophane and save it to my desktop. So the next step is to take our STL file and move it into Ultimaker Cura. Cura is a slicing software that was created by Ultimaker, and it's free and easy to download on the internet. So once we open up Ultimaker Cura, we're going to go File, Open Files. From here, we're going to select the STL file that we just made. You'll notice a few things when it starts to open. One is that it's yellow and red in some spots. This is nothing to be alarmed about. It's not going to print this way. It's going to print in whatever color filament we load into the 3D printer. This is just Ultimaker's color coding, and it allows us to see what Ultimaker Cura considers trouble spots, like this red overhang. And those are just pointing out to us the overhang areas that it suspects might be a problem. Um, we don't need to worry about them right now because we don't have that much of an overhang. The next thing you'll probably notice is that it's standing upright, and it'd be easy to suspect that we could just lay this down on the printing bed and have it print face down or face up as it were. Uh, but ultimately, we want the quality of the image to be as high as possible. That's what makes these lithophanes so effective. And the printer is better at capturing that quality if it prints upright. And the third is that it lines itself along this Y axis. So it's lined up along this green line here. And we want it that way. Um, the, printer itself is able to get the most clarity for an image like this on the y-axis. So now that it's in here, there are quite a few things we can do to control it and manipulate it. Um, over here on the left menu bar, we can go to our move tool and move it around. And this is especially helpful if we have multiple pieces that we're going to print at the same time. We also have a scale where we can enlarge it, and you'll notice that it always shrinks uh, shrinks or enlarges and then drops down onto the print bed, which is wonderful. If you go too large, you'll notice that it turns a yellow and gray striped. And so it's a little bit of a hazard um, warning for us. So we don't want it to be that large. And another thing to keep in, in, in mind when making 
scale adjustments is that it doesn't have a lot to support it. So it doesn't have anything on the back or the front. It's going to be pretty narrow, and therefore we don't want it to be too big because it's going to invite problems when the printer is working. So by keeping it to a relatively small scale, we'll have better success. Now that we have the lithophane in place, we want to look over here at this menu bar. So there are a lot of defaults that will happen um, here and some of them we like and some we want to get rid of and change. So the first default is that right now it's set to fine 0.1 millimeter and we want to keep that uh, right here in our quality that's issued here 0.1 millimeter and that's the layer of the slices. Uh, the slices are the layers which the 3D printer is sent to determine where and when and how much of the filament to place in an area. If we go to a, a finer quality, like extra fine, it's going to go a lot slower, but it also is going to be a lot more detailed. And if we go to a normal quality, it's going to be a lot faster, but also it's going to lose some detail. So right about 0.1 is a, is a nice sweet spot. As well, we want to look at the infill. Automatically, the infill density is set to 20. And that's because, like this little icon you can see here, for the parts that are solid, there's really no need to infill them completely. There's no need for them to be solid when they can have a structurally sound level of infill and you wouldn't see it anyway. But in this case, what we're looking for is for light to pass through the lithophane. And in order to light, for light to pass through and change the shading and the value, we really need it to be as solid as possible. So it'd be tempting to put it at 100, but Putting it at 99 is kind of the sweet spot. It's almost at 100, but sometimes the printer can have trouble with 100. As far as the infill pattern, we want to move it to grids. When it comes to material, we're, we already know what material we, we have because it's, this machine only takes one material, so we don't have to worry about that. By the way, if you don't see some of these drop-downs, you can always click on this slider button and it will bring up some preferences that allow you to include and exclude whatever settings that you want to see. So if you're not seeing things like infill density, you can come over to the slider, bring this preferences up and you can click on it. The next thing we want to look at is speed. Speed is normally set for a program like this at 50. Um, the speed is also going to affect the quality. And so although we're going to change this to 20, and that means it's going to be a lot slower, it also means that it's going to have a lot higher quality resolution. And the next we want to worry about is support. So we're going to say generate support, and it's going to bring about <clears throat> a few options here. Uh, the first is structure. Uh, support structure or structure support. We want it to be normal, not tree. In terms of support placement, we want it touching build plate. In terms of support overhang angle, this is what determines um, how essentially, let's, let's look over here. Our supports are what's going to hold it upright while it's printing. And we can see that if this was the only part that's touching the build plate, it's going to have a lot, a lot of trouble creating this overhang. And I, by overhang, I mean all of this space that's not touching the build plate. And our support essentially creates a triangle here that helps to su literally support our lithophane. And with our support overhang angle, as you can see here, um, at 0%, all overhangs are supported at 90 none will be. So I'm going to change this to 10% so that anything that is, and you'll notice that yes, my um, red has changed because they're now highlighting those support areas. Um, it's essentially going to allow anything over a 10 degree angle to achieve some support. And instead of zigzag, I'm going to go with concentric. Um, I'm not going to change any of these other settings. These are all great, except with one exception, which is use towers. Towers are supports that Cura wants to make to help things stand upright. And those are really wonderful in some applications, but if you imagine a tower that's going to support all of these little red dots, 
then it's going to be essentially a support that's adhered to our image face and it's going to be impossible to get off and it's going to kind of ruin our lithophane. So we're going to turn off use towers. And lastly, we're going to do build plate adhesion. There are three adhesion types that are common within a 3D print. One is a brim, one is a skirt, and one is a raft. And in this case, we want to go with brim, which means it's going to create a large layer, or well, relatively large layer, around the face that's going to help support all of the main material that grows up out of it. And so I'm going to continue to keep this at uh, 250 millimeters length, but then on brim width, I'm going to change that to 10 just to make it a bit wider. Now that we have our settings in place, all we have to do is hit slice. And slowly, but surely, it will slice up our STL file and turn it into it a file that the Ultimaker can read. So now it has been sliced. It tells us it's, this lithophane will take 13 hours approximately to print. And that's about normal. We're gonna say save to disk. And we wanna make sure that G code is selected. So Ultimaker 2 Plus only accepts G code. And that's something you can just check out on your 3D printing machine. It will tell you what kind of files it accepts. So we're gonna say save. And we're good to go. So now we can take this G-code file and transfer it over to the printer and it can begin printing.